All right, in problem 15, we were given the graph of G prime, and we're told that this is a semicircle and this is a triangle, and that we want to find G of three, and we're given that G of zero is one. Okay, so the, the, the trick here is to um, recognize that you can find the function values by integrating the derivative. So remember that when you integrate, um, let's say g prime of x dx, you're going to get g of you know g of x, and if you do a definite integral, you're going to get um, the g of b minus g of a. So for example, if you want to find g of three, let's integrate up to three, and since we're given g of zero, we're going to go from zero to three, because then this will be g of three minus g of zero. And if you know what if you know what g of zero is, which is one, you can find g of three. If we can find the total value of this definite integral, which you can because you just have to find the area essentially of the semicircle on and up of this triangle, half of this triangle here. So so the area of the semicircle. Or actually, no, only this part because we're going from zero to three. So it's only this, this quarter circle. So that area is one fourth. Remember, pi r squared, the radius is two. So one fourth, two squared. So that'll be just pi. And then the area of this triangle will be half base times two. The base is one. The height is two, so it'll just simply be one. So the total area, the total area from zero to three of this integral will be pi plus one. Because this has an area of pi, this has an area of one. So the total area will be pi plus one. Okay, so from here you can solve for g of three, because you have g of three minus one equals pi plus one. Just add one to both sides. And you get g of three equals pi plus two. And so the answer will be B. All right, 16, if you're given that the function F is given by F of X equals X cubed minus six X squared minus 15 X, what's the maximum value on the interval zero to six? Okay, so um, one way to go about this is to find the derivative and then find the critical values on this interval and then evaluate the function at those critical values because those are where either you could have a potential minimum or maximum and also evaluate the endpoints so you can compare them so the derivative of f of x f prime of x would be equal to 3x squared minus 12x minus 15 set this equal to zero Then you have x equals five and x equals negative one as your possible critical values. Now, since we are only focusing on the interval from zero to six, we don't care about the negative one. So what we can do is evaluate f of zero, f of five, and then f of six. So with the maximum value, we'll have to occur one of these points. So let's see what we get. So f of zero, remember we're evaluating f of zero, so plug it into the function. So zero minus zero minus zero, so we get zero. f of five would be five cubed, 125 minus six times five squared. So six times 25, to be 150 minus 15 times five minus 75. Now you don't even have to evaluate this because you know this is gonna be less than zero. It would be negative 100, but if you get like worried that you can, you know, do the algebra without a calculator, um, but you know this is negative. So then it's gonna be less than this. 
now we have to check to see if what f of six is. So six cubed, 216, minus six times six times six, remember six times 36, which is still 216. So it's 216 minus 216, minus 15 times six, which is 90. So you get negative 90. So then the maximum value will be this one, zero, because both of these are negative. And so your answer will be A. All right, 17. This integral, we want to integrate. Now this one is, um, I, don't, I can't really give you like an easy way to do this. This is something where you, um, probably just have to have to become familiar with the integration it's it's um if you if you can recall when you when you when you're going through the you know the chapter where you learn integration integration it's it's not like differentiation you have to just practice it and try different techniques so there's not always formulas so sometimes you just have to be really clever in how you um manipulate this so what you can actually do is make this equal to one plus x plus two squared. If you, were, if, you add, did the, if you factor this out, you get one plus x squared plus four x plus four plus one, and then so to be able to equal that. Now here, this is actually, you can see that this is the derivative of the tangent function. No, I mean, sorry, the inverse tangent function. And that we're going to make the and for one small thing except you're going to make the u x plus two then du would be simply dx and then what you would have here is one over one plus u squared du And then from here, it's, it's a little more clear to see that this is the derivative of the inverse tangent function or the arc tangent. So then this would just be the arc tangent, arc tangent of u plus c, or you can say the arc tangent of x plus 2. Plus your constant c. So your answer will be A. Now, the tangent derivatives are the ones you definitely have to memorize. I would, I would recommend um, focusing on the tangent and secant derivatives and integrals. Um, it's, it's not really common for you to have to differentiate like inverse sine or inverse cosine or inverse, you know, cotangent. Um, but it, it's the, it's, it's, not, I wouldn't say common, but whenever there is an integral of a, you know, inverse trig function or derivative inverse trig function, it's usually going to be tan the tangent or the secant functions. All right, 18. Okay, we have f as the function defined as the cubed root of x. We want to find the approximation for f of 10 found by using the line tangent to the graph of f at the point eight comma two. So essentially you wanna get an equation for the tangent line. So like, a, you know, you could use a y, I just like to go with y equals mx plus b, but you can use point slope form. Once you get an equation for the tangent line, just calculate what you would get um, for y if you plug in 10 into this equation. So we gotta find the equate, we gotta find the value of the slope and the value of the y-intercept. So remember the value of the slope, it will be the derivative at that point, at the point eight. So let's first find the derivative. Remember this is the same as x to the one third power. So the derivative of x would be one third x to the negative two thirds, or just one over three x to the two thirds. Now let's this, this when x is two, 
or sorry, when x is eight, actually, when x is eight, so f prime of eight will be equal to one over eight to the two thirds power. Now, make sure you remember how to do this. Um, this is just like the third root of eight. It's like eight to the one third squared, or you can do eight squared and the third root of that. Um, so let's say eight to the, the third root of eight, eight to the one third, that would be two. Then you still have squared there. So then you have one over three times four, so you have one twelfth. So your slope is one twelfth. So you have y is one twelfth x plus b. And you now find the y-intercept by just plugging this point in for x and y. So you get two equals one twelfth or eight twelfth when you plug eight in for x plus b. Eight twelfth is just two thirds. So two minus two thirds, and you get that B is four thirds. And so your equation will be Y equals one twelfth X plus four thirds. Now we evaluate it for F of 10. So we plug in 10 for X. Now we'll get y is 10 twelfths plus 4 thirds. We, uh, you know, combine these fractions. This is, this is 4 twelve or 4 thirds is going to be 16, 16 twelves. So what you have is 26 twelves. which will reduce to 13 over six. And so your answer will be C. Number 19. Okay, so here we got The limit as x goes to zero of four x squared over e to the four x minus four x minus one. Now, you can plug in zero into here, but if you plug in zero, you would get um, zero, you know, four times zero over e to the zero minus zero or minus four times zero or minus zero minus one. So what would happen is that remember e to the one is one. So what you end up getting is, is one, zero over zero. Now, if you remember, like this, at least in my at least in my um textbook, um this we, we learned we learn about L'Hopital's rule, but it's usually covered in like a later chapter. For my in my course, it's it, it's covered in like chapter eight. So it's like we have to jump like, so we have to jump all the way to chapter eight just to go over this one section where we learn about L'Hopital's rule or L Hospital's rule. And that's essentially, remember, if you have like a, a, an indeterminate form, form, like zero, like infinity over infinity, zero over zero. Um, sometimes you'll have like, you know, in, infinity to infinity, one to infinity, something like that. Um, so whenever you got something like this, what you can do is just take the derivative of the top and the bottom separately and then plug the value in for x again and see what you get. So you take the derivative, you get 8x over 4e to the 4x minus 4. And when you plug in 0, this time you'll get 0 over four e to the zero minus four. 
So 40 to zero. So you still get four minus four. So you still get zero over zero. So again, you get an indeterminate form. So if you get if you get an indeterminate form, the good thing about Lopez Hal's rules, you can just do it again. You just keep on doing it, keep on doing it until you get something that um is, you know, logical. That's not an indeterminate form. So we take the derivative of this, and then we get eight over 16 e to the four x. So eight over 16, that just becomes one over two e to the four x. Now, when you plug zero into here, you get one over two e to the zero or one over two times one, or just one half. So you get a number this time. And so the answer then is B. All right, number 20, um, we have G that's gonna be a twice differentiable increasing function. And we're told that if g of zero is 20 and g of 10 equals 220, which the following must be true on the interval from zero to 10. Now, um, the, these types of problems, I just, it, it, I would, you know, usually look um, for um, of like let me uh, like a theorem, like one of the theorems that um, that you that, that you um, are you, that your professor or teacher will usually tell us important, like you know, squeeze theorem, mean value theorem, intermediate value theorem, um, you know, average value theorem, um, something like that, because usually that's what they're getting at. I mean, but but you can always just check and theor and mix and you know theoretically, um, or you know, just um, brute force each one to see if it actually works. Sometimes it'll take a long time, but it'll still work. Now in this case. What they're actually looking for is the um, the mean value theorem. So you're given the interval and you're told it's increasing and it's twice differentiable. So we know it's continuous and the derivative exists. So then what they're essentially looking for is that, remember the mean value theorem says that for there's some value, you know, f prime of c will equal f of b minus f of a over the interval you know over b minus a so for an interval from a to b we can find that the slope you know connecting the endpoints will be equal to the to the derivative of some point within there it's going to be the mean value theorem again make sure you memorize that that one is usually always going to be tested on your ap exam in this case what we have is your B is 10 and your A is zero. So you have G of 10 minus G of zero over 10 minus zero. G of 10, we're told to be, it's 220, 220 minus 20 over 10. So we get 200 over 10. Or 20. So then we're saying that there is some value between 0 and 10 such that you can find that the derivative of that value will be equal to 20. So that's going to be B.